There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cameron Chronicles. I'm your host, Max Rigo, joined tonight by former sports editor and fellow men's basketball beat, Evan Colon. Evan, thanks again for coming back on the show. Absolutely. All right, well, let's get right into it. Uh, Once again, John Shire delivered on the recruiting trail, uh, securing the commitment of Mark Mitchell, a five-star forward out of Kansas and the number 10 player in 2022, according to 24-7 Sports. So, Evan, let's get right into it. What are your thoughts on this this pickup? Yeah, there's obviously a lot of talking points um, with this, whether it be specifically next year's team or John Shire as a recruiter. But I think one of the biggest things, and I said this after the Derek Lively commitment as well, is, you know, it it clearly seems like people want to be a part of John Shire's first team. You know, a a comparison I make is sort of not Coach K's first recruiting class, but his, uh, I I think, I forget which year it was. I think it was 82, the one with Billis and uh, Dawkins and all that sort of, you know, the class that saved Coach K. And I, and I, I, I just think, you know, people look back at that and Jay Billis, you know, people like him are so proud of being a part of that first really good class that Coach K had. And it seems like a lot of these players they want to be sort of that first class that John Shire had. And I don't know, you know, whether that's in these players' mindset at all, but it, it, it seems like John Shire is doing something right. And, it, you know, obviously next year's class is pretty certified to be the number one in the country after this latest commitment. And, you know, definitely one of the better, you know, even as, as good Duke's had a lot of good classes over the years, and this is definitely rivaling them uh, near the top. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really impressive how quickly it's, transitioned from you know often you know sometimes I know he has time it's a different situation from maybe like a guy like Hubert Davis um having a year to still be the associate head coach and still uh have a year before coach K actually steps down but I mean having the amount of talent that's coming in for next year's class I mean the work that he's put in uh talking about Shire obviously on the on the trail and really building I mean you could tell he's built so many of these connections with with guys going back to even before probably um coach k announced that he was he was going to step down after this year um yeah it's just it's just amazing how i mean how seamless the transition has been and it's it shows how good of a spot the program is in right now i know um they're obviously you know it's weird that we haven't we haven't really seen them play since uh since the Ohio state game, but, and then they obviously lost the last game they played, but it's still, I mean, it's still amazing how good of a a situation they're in right now. And the guys that they bring in year after year, and that obviously is not, not skipping a beat with, uh, with Mitchell and Derek Lively and Filipowski and Tariq Whitehead, Jaden Shutt. Um, It's just, it's just really impressive. Um, So we obviously, you know, we've got to talk a little bit about Mitchell himself. Um, He's, you know, he's kind of a combo forward from, from the looks of it. Um, can play both the three and the four, uh, six, eight, two, oh, five, two, fifteen, that kind of range. Um, Evan, what are your thoughts on his game and how he kind of fits into the, the picture for next year's team? So, yeah, I'll get to that in a second. I did want to comment on some of the stuff that you were just talking about. I think there are reports that Mark Mitchell, one of the biggest differentiators in, in picking Duke over UCLA, um, was sort of looking at that Duke and Zaga atmosphere. Um, compared to the Gonzaga UCLA atmosphere, which was still good. But if you, you know, if you're watching on TV, there was a big difference between the Gonzaga UCLA game and then the Duke Gonzaga game in terms of attendance, just in terms of feel and just how big of the, you know, the hype going into the matchup, even though Gonzaga UCLA was one, two. And that's just a testament. It just, it just shows what Coach K has done for this program over the years, bringing Duke to not just becoming a certified blue blood, but really, you know, the top of those blue bloods, you know, compa- you know, the fact that, that's a differentiator for Mark Mitchell of Duke versus UCLA, which is obviously the pinnacle of college basketball historically. It just goes to show again, exactly what you said, what great of a spot uh, Duke is in right now. And then just talking about Mark Mitchell specifically, the biggest thing that that stands out to me is the potential next year's team is going to have defensively with Mitchell on board. Obviously there's a lot of great offensive players. You got Whitehead shut and Filipowski, but I think the defensive potential, the defensive potential of having Mark Mitchell and Derek Lively in the front court, you know, and it seems like, you know, John Shire, his national championship team at Duke 2010, that was obviously a very good defensive team as well, especially down low compared to some of the, 
some of Duke's up, you know, 2015, maybe, might be not as, not sort of the same style. So obviously it, it looks like John Shire's putting a great emphasis on defense and he's got a roster to back that up. Absolutely. And I'm actually reading through, uh, Mitchell actually published a blog on uh, Sports Illustrated, um, which I'm literally reading right now, just saying why he committed to Duke. Um, and it's really interesting. You know, he, he talked about how he feels very like in sync with the rest of the guys in his class. I mean, he talked about how lively is a, is a seven, he's seven foot feet tall and he can do it all, you know, both ends, but especially, you know, he, he says he can dominate defensively. Um, and then with Philip I mean, he talked, I think, uh, Mark's Mitchell said that he's a, he's a face up four who can beat you in a lot of different ways. So, I mean, that versatility that they have in the front court, I mean, that's really something that's, that Shire is going to be able to just toy around with really. I mean, he can send out different lineup combinations and, I know it seems like he, you know, he, he won't, I don't know how far he'll stray from the current, you know, motion offense that, that Duke run has been running and runs for years, but um, he obviously wants to put his stamp on it and, you know, he can, and he's definitely going to be able to put his stamp on stamp on this program with, with the roster right out of the gate. Um, and just, just adding, I mean, he's very like watching his highlights. He's very fluid. I mean, he's got, he's a lefty, which I always, I always, I don't know, for some reason, love that. Um, very fluid, can move off the dribble, can move off the ball, um, really gets to his spots pretty, pretty easily. Um, and can really, and, you know, has that ability to even post, you know, post up and, and go to work down low a little bit, if, you know, depending on the lineups, they may not, may not be a ton of that next year, but, uh, we, we obviously, we shall see. So, uh, excited, excited to see him suit up. I mean, he's a, He's another one of those guys that uh, that Duke has thrived with, you know, those six, seven, six, eight guys forwards, you know, Jason Tatum, um, RJ Barrett, a lot of these types of guys that Duke is bringing in. Um, and he can, I mean, he can thrive in the, in the offense they want to run. Yeah. Um, obviously Mitchell is his defensive potential is off the charts, not the best outside shooter. I, I look at him and see sort of a prime stretch for, and, you know, where basketball is going, you know, modern basketball, but that does, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, front court versatility. It does bring up questions in terms of the lineups that Shire is going to run. You know, do you have a lineup with lively Filipowski and Mitchell all out at the same time? You know, you'd think, you know, closing time you would. So does, does Mitchell or Filipowski, does one of them really fit at the three? Cause it, it seems like both of their best positions would be power forward, but you know, I'd like to hear maybe some of your thoughts on the potential lineups that Shire could throw out there. Yeah, I mean, it obviously depends on who comes back from this year's team. Um, obviously, that's the I'm sure I'm not pretty sure none of those guys have thought about that at all. Um, they're in, you know locked into the this season and and this non conference stretch. But I mean, I, I would I would assume obviously you know of the of the of the guys who are currently on the team, Paolo is gone. Obviously, uh, he will be the number two pick at worst. Uh, AJ Griffin, I would assume he probably goes pro. Um, I know he hasn't played that much and he's coming off the, um, still dealing with that knee injury and kind of getting his, working his way back into the rotation. I would still assume he probably goes pro his talent, his upside is still too, too high, um, for him to, to pass up on that. Um, I would assume Trevor Keels probably goes pro as well. I mean, he's shown a lot of flashes. He's been inconsistent with his outside shot, but from all accounts, um, from I know from uh, athletic feature uh, athletic article about him, you know his high school shooter said he's one of the best shooters he's ever seen. Um, his high school coach, uh, I mean, um, and so I would assume he he likely goes pro. Wendell Moore probably as well. I mean, he's literally going to probably be ACC Player of the Year if this keeps up. Um, so I mean, then you're looking at Jeremy Roach, Joey Baker, who still could come back because of the COVID year. Um, I think Baker's probably gone just in terms of graduating, but yeah, I, I would assume um, Roach is a guy who I, I think actually, and obviously I forgot to say Mark Williams. I would assume he probably goes pro. Um, he's made a big, I think he's made a huge leap this year with his footwork and his D and his defensive um, versatility, just like guarding, not being, he's become more of more than just a shot blocker um, in my opinion. So I, all those, those, I think those five, five guys that I mentioned going early Baker graduating, Theo John graduating, Bates Jones obviously on his way out. Um, those two guys graduating. I 
that probably leaves Jeremy Roach as the holdover and Jalen Blakes. Um, so who I, I actually am very high on Jalen Blakes down the road. Um, I think he maybe should even get a little more playing time now, but that's beside the point. Um, yeah. So I think Roach Blakes, I mean, Roach would be the starting point guard. Absolutely. Be the leader of the team. Um, I think Jaden Shutt probably is, would be like a six man right and off the bench instant. He's like the best shooter in the class consensus according to a lot of the analysts. So he would be like instant offense. Um, you got Whitehead probably sliding in as the two could be Mitchell at the three Filipowski at the four lively at the five. That sounds like it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess Filipowski has obviously the outside shot. You know, I worry about Mitchell just being at the three, just in terms of the shooting. But I guess, you know, you got Whitehead out there, you got Filipowski out there. Um, you know, hopefully Roche, you know, continues to improve his shot. And then you got Whitehead. So it, it, it could work. Um, I can see, you know, shut being out there in the, you know, like you said, you know, probably six man role is most likely for him, but definitely, you know, playing a big role with his outside shot. Um, I'm still worried a little bit about that starting five in the outside shooting. So I don't know if you can, few of any of those same concerns but yeah like I said earlier the defensive potential is off the charts and it it should be a fun year yeah um I would I mean it's definitely a concern looking at the roster I think I think I mean this I mean you could look at this year's team and say you know they're not a great shooting team but they don't rely on the three-point shot I mean they they attack you know they keep getting to the line they drive, go to the rim hard, um, you know, one through one through four, they have guys who can take their man off the dribble. Um, so I, I don't think it's a huge, um, like a, you know, you know, red alert sound the alarm, but they probably will look at some guys in the, in the transfer portal. I'm sure. Um, one of the, I'm sure, you know, one of the reasons that John Shire was hired. And I think I can't remember the exact quote that, uh, that Nina King had in her press conference, or in that press conference. And, you know, so many people have said how he's, he's kind of a, just a, another, he's a young up and comer and he's, he's coaching to where um, it's like the future of basketball. He wants to, he wants to, you know, take Duke into this new era of the transfer portal and small ball and analytics just seems like it's a, it's a perfect storm for them to go look into the transfer portal and, you know, find a, a plug and play shooter um, who can, who can help them and maybe fill in at the three or the two. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I, I am interested in seeing what they do, um, in, on that front, but I don't think, I don't think it's a huge concern as of right now. I think it's possible that Mitchell develops a, a jumper. He's got like a, a smooth jumper. It's just not as like, probably not as doesn't have as many reps because he, he is so physically gifted. He can just take his guy off the dribble and get, you know, get a lot done in the paint, but, um, that's obviously something to, something to, to look at. Um, and then I just, you know, just your point, I think we might have brushed over when, when you mentioned it, but the fact that they beat out UCLA, um, in this, in this battle, I mean, UCLA is coming off final four. Um, this ad just adds to the, the schools they've beaten out. I mean, they beat out Kentucky for lively. Um, and yeah, it's just very, it's just really impressive how Shire has just has not skipped the beat at all. Um, so yeah, it's it's really impressive. Um, just you know, Shire is, is one of the better recruiters in the country, and he's proven it <laughs> the last uh, the last few months. So, uh, any other thoughts on Mitchell or Shire? Anything on that front? Yeah, I think just one more thing with next year's team. One, I, I'd agree with your fact. I mean, John Shire, it, it's absolutely ridiculous that he hasn't even you know, he's co- he coached one game when Coach K had to miss a game last year, um, but but he's not even a full-time head coach yet. And he's already proven himself not only to be, in my opinion, among the best recruiters in the country. I think, you know, so far he has proven to be the best recruiter, at least, you know, not only they have the number one class, they have, they were the number one class before Mitchell. I think there was some competition with Kentucky, maybe a couple other schools, but right now it, they're the number one class and it's not particularly close. And then just one more thing with next year's team, just trying to play devil advocate. I talked about all the things I like about next year's roster, specifically the defense. And, you know, we talked about the versatility, I think one other thing is it, it's going to be different than most recent Duke teams in terms of not having that go-to number one score. Obviously this year you have Paolo. Um, last year they didn't really have that, you know, they had Matthew Hurt to an extent, but they didn't have that really go-to guy. 
um, you know, like a Paolo Zion. And, you know, we saw how, how that ended up in previous years. They had sort of Vernon Carey that they could just go to in the post. Next year, it's not looking like they're going to have that sort of guy. You know, you can't just like get Derek Lively is not an offense first center. You know, his his main thing is defense. He's obviously a very talented player overall, but, you know, they don't have that power. They don't have Zion. They don't have Marvin Bagley. Um, they, they have a lot of guys, but they don't have that one guy. So I'm, that's another concern with next year's team. And, and hopefully, you know, that's something that John Shire is going to have to figure out how they're going to, you know, score the ball. Um, but that, that was sort of one more thing I wanted to hear your thoughts on too. Yeah, I think I think Whitehead could be that guy. He could be he could develop into a a very consistent 15, 18 point a game scorer. But uh, he's got you know he's got a good handle, can can shoot a little bit. He can you know work his guy off the dribble. Um, he could he could end up being that you know that prime. He could be the leading scorer. Um, it obviously could end up being Jeremy Roach. But yeah, so. Yeah, um, I agree with you. There's there's a lot of guys who sort of have that potential. Um, Whitehead was sort of the first name that came to mind in terms of that go-to offensive player. Um, I think it's going to be a good test for Shire. Obviously, he's shown he can recruit. The biggest thing is showing that he can actually, you know, perform, actually get these guys to, to play up to their potential. And um, so it, it's a good test. You know, it's easy when you have a guy like not saying, you know, it's easy to coach the recent Duke teams. There's a reason, you know. But sometimes it's easy on the offensive end to just dump it down to Vernon Carey or just give it to Marvin. So I think it's going to be a good test for John Shire to figure out, all right, how exactly is this offense going to run? And I think it's going to be uh, – it, it, he's got a talented roster, but it's also going to be a good test for John Shire to have the kind of roster that he has in his first season. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I had a little malfunction here on my end, but – uh, thanks for thanks for taking over there for a sec. But yeah, I mean it'll it'll be interesting to see. I'm very interested in seeing a who you know how he work operates with this roster. Who you know also who he he will obviously have a an open spot in the the coaching staff, replacing himself pretty much. Um, it'll be interesting to see who slides into that associate head coaching role. Could be could be uh, Chris Carrawell. Uh, that probably be a the safest bet, but obviously, you know, nothing is set in stone. So, um, yeah. And, you know, Evan, thanks for, thanks for hopping on. We're going to, we're going to try and wrap this up right now. And obviously it's been, it's been a busy day for all of us here with, uh, with the Mitchell commitment and then Duke football finding a new, new head coach. Any thoughts on Mike Elko coming to Durham? Yeah. Not to get too specific. It, it seems like I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to lie. I don't know too much about it, but it seems like a sort of a slant on Kyer. I'm excited for, you know, it's sort of similar to the Mitchell commitment in terms of Duke football, obviously, you know, looking to be that, that defensive first type team in the ACC, but they obviously looks like they got a bright future as well. Duke, Duke athletics uh, is in a, it's in a good spot. Couldn't agree more big. I think it's a, I, I don't know a ton. I mean, I don't know a ton about him. Like he's not the, he's not the most like well-known defensive coordinator on the market. That was definitely a uh, Brett Venables who got hired at Oklahoma. Um, but I, I would definitely say he's a pretty good hire. Looks, I mean, good, seems like a pretty good recruiter, you know, experience at, uh, at Texas A&M, Notre Dame, Wake Forest. So who knows? We'll, we'll see. So uh, thanks for, thanks for joining Evan. And uh, thanks for, thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks, Evan. For sure. Thanks for having me on. All right. Thanks for tuning in everyone.